Let's start with the horizon line going across the middle of our paper. We're going to find the center right about, uh, we'll put it slightly off center right about there. For myself a little vertical line. This is going to be the back corner of a room. We'll use nice wide uh, two point vanishing points. I'm going to label this vanishing point one and vanishing point two just to keep track of things. Now from this side, I'm going to make this relatively fine, but I'm not going to go overboard. Let's just draw a reference line that way. Take a reference line this way. So establish my first two lines. A vertical line over here. As you can see, I'm not using a straight edge or a parallel rule for my lines. This is just a rough sketch, but I want to lay in my guidelines, my ruler, just so that uh, I can be clear for this video. Put it back, mark it right there. There we go. And this is the top and bottom of the lines I'm going to use. Um, come out like so. That's a little tall blur that I had planned. There's that line. This one will go up here. There we go. See? So we have a corner here. Give myself a vertical line right about here. There we go. So this is a scenery. This is a, a wall of flats for a set on a stage. So I'm going to make these freestanding. I'm going to add some depth to this wall over here. Just like so. Reference lines. And now I'll add a vertical line parallel to the other one. Right, so this gives me some a little bit of thickness, a little bit of reveal, so we can see that this is going to be a thick wall. It's got some thickness to it. Um, I'm going to put a doorway right about here. So I'm going to put a vertical line here. I'm going to go above the, vent, the horizon line because the horizon line is where our, our eyes are, and this needs to be taller than our, um, our eyes because doors are usually taller than we are, and we're looking at it as if we're standing at relatively the same height as the floor here. So we do that. There's that line. It's going all the way back, but I don't need to draw the whole thing. I just need a reference. And so there's the height there. So now we have this this drawing here of this wall and give this some thickness. Just like the wall has thickness over here, the door is also going, going to need to have thickness. That wouldn't make any sense. So there's the top of the door. And you notice the line is a lot less drastic than this one, but it's still in perspective. This down here also will need thickness going up to that vanishing point. So there's that height right there. Right. I'm going to add a line to the top here. Okay, so how we've established the door. I'm going to try and do the rest relatively freehand because I'm not looking to be that exact with this drawing. So here is, I'm going to put a picture frame on this wall. And this goes above the horizon line here and then below it here goes like this. So we have to draw a, a reference line going back approximately to our vanishing point. And we have a vertical line there. Make this a picture frame. Now, in this other room, the wall of the room is here. You know what? Let me fill this in right here. We'll give this some thickness here. So there's that wall here. Okay. Uh, this wall is going to have thickness going back, and here's the bottom of the wall where it meets the floor. But in the other room, we're also going to need a bottom of the wall where it meets the floor along the same line because it's an extension of the same of the same apartment, let's say, or the same house. And here's where the ceiling meets. So we have a little, so we've got the other room, we've got the little uh, ceiling marker, we've got the top of the door. Go. I'm not going to get too dark because I might want to put stuff in front of here. But here we have, uh, so we have our picture frame. Let me put a, a person in here. 
This will be a portrait of Aunt Bessie or Uncle Buford. There's a picture frame and we can even give it a little bit of in perspective um, decoration around the edge the sides of it and you notice that they still the diagonal lines still go all the way over here to our vanishing point. How bad was that? We can fix it up a little bit. Now the bottom was pretty close. It's perfectly okay to do rough sketches in the beginning and then fix it up a little bit with your roller later on so it looks more accurate. So now, uh, back to the other room. I'm going to make this room, this wall, a little shallower in here so we see another wall in there. Let me erase this here. Do a vertical line right about there. And then we're going to add a floor right there. In the other room we can even add a window into this wall. Let's add a window into this wall here and we're not going to see the whole window because it would tuck in behind that wall there. And we'll put a mullion here and a little bit of a reveal because there's some thickness to that wall as illustrated over here. So a little bit of top and bottom. We'll thickness of the mullion here halfway through. Now we've established there's a mullion halfway through and we've established that the height of window is there. So the window in this room would be approximately the same height. So we're going to fix up this a little bit. And this is, uh, like I said, it's a rough one. I'm sort of combining rough and refinement at the same time. On your rough sketches, especially in the beginning, you just need to establish that you want a window. I'm just putting it so that I don't look too much like I don't know what I'm doing. So here we're making a nice big window. Actually, maybe we'll make it two windows because that, with this mullion in the middle, it makes it look like it's a double hung window. So we'll do one about that wide, and this one's going to appear a little bit wider because it's in perspective. And then we'll erase the stuff in the middle. And there we go. So here is a mullion for this window along with a little bit of thickness. Now, since we're looking at it from an angle, we wouldn't see any of the thickness on this side of the window, just on this side of the window. And then we have our mullion height right there, established by the fact that it's that high along the vanishing point line, the um, horizon line. It looks a little off center here, so obviously it's, like I said, it's a rough sketch. So we'll cheat a little bit, make that a little bit higher, a little bit thicker. There we go for those. Now in front of the window, I'm going to stick um, a cabinet of some sort, maybe a nice big chest of drawers. And this is going to go back towards that direction. And it's pretty easy to draw things if you draw a box first. So we're going to draw make this a nice box and in two point perspective it's going to come back like so. It's going to come out from the wall. This is marking that this is against the wall because it's even with the floor where the wall meets the floor. So we've got to come out from the wall a little bit in perspective and we'll make it uh, this long to that marker so we've got to come out from the wall there and then down at the floor we need to come out again Change that line direction a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now we can do a vertical line. And we're establishing that it's coming out this far. So now this is our boundary line going this way. And we need a line here. And wherever it crosses, it's a little... There we go. That looks pretty good. Wherever it crosses this line, that's where that stops. And this one, wherever this goes down to, it stops at this reference line. 
So here is our box that we're now going to put in a chest of drawers. And let's say we want three drawers. So we're going to divide this into three. And so there's our vanishing point reference line. There's the next one. Okay, we'll make that a little bit thicker. And they'll be awfully wide drawers, so we'll break it up into a uh, three set there. Now, there's a technique for finding the center of this. Let me do that real quick. If you take a line across the front, and then another one this way across the front, from corner to corner, these are not reference lines. They're just they're not going to the vanishing points, they're not part of the drawing, they're simply to find where that cross crisscross cross point is. That is the center of the cabinet. But you see how it looks off center? This space looks smaller in perspective. It would look smaller, but that's the middle. So we'll make this a six drawer cabinet. And there's the line to break up the center so that these are even. And we'll make them double drawer, double handle drawers. And I'm doing this by eye. We could also figure out where the center of that is and then where the center is that is to make an exact placement of these handles. But like I said, this is a, a rough sketch. We'll beef up the top a little bit, make it a little bit thicker, get a little more character. There we go. Let's place, uh, let's put a television on top of this. Vertical line back there. Change pencils, and uh, again from here, this line is going to go back to there. We're going to make it an older television with a big tube. Free up the inside, get rid of the window because it's blocking the window. Now this is one of the places where we have to cheat from the rule that in two-point perspective you have vertical lines and then everything else goes to the vanishing point because this curved line back here is not actually part of two-point perspective. So we're sort of guessing. There is a technique for that, but I'm not covering that here. So here is the TV front, the face, the side, and then we've got what's called the bezel, which is that frame around the tube which would be in perspective with little curved corners and then maybe some control knobs and a speaker. This is a TV that might be in your parents or grandparents rooms. And there we go. And maybe it's discussion between two people there. So there's the television. Now downstage here, uh, well, let's put a nice big armchair right here for someone watching the TV, and we'll establish it right about here. This is someone who sits entirely too close to the TV, so we'll put a chair, nice big chair. Now that we're going to make it, it's closer to us, so we're going to draw a box. to put this TV, this chair in, and go backwards from there. So here's the footprint of the chair on the floor. And we go up from there. Here, we're going to come down. So, if this is going up from there, right about there. Just like that. And up from here. And about here. Now we go. Okay, so here's our box. We have the close side of the box, which will become the back of the chair. 
and we'll make this little cheat and give it a little curve, curve back. Give it some legs here. Up that way. Follow our reference lines. And about halfway up, do another reference line going back like this. I'll give it another an arm. Long reference line. Not the most comfortable looking chair. Make the chair a bit darker. Now I'm going in with a dark pencil and firming up the lines that we want to keep. shading underneath it and then we'll go in and erase a bunch of the lines that we don't want to keep so we're making all these lines darker we'll erase a bunch of this other stuff And then we're going to go in and make things darker again. edge for a few of these other lines. Line weight, you want the stuff closer to you to be a little darker. This cleans things up nicely. Basically we have a quick two-point perspective sketch using boxes to make our furniture. To finish this off, we'll take some black artist tape. and frame it a little bit. For presentation.